Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I have this tank where I harvest water coming from the air conditioner in summertime for watering potted plants. While this is a useful to save drinking water, it might be a source of inconvenience when I forget to check the level of the water into the tank. Pushed by the need to resolve this and another much worse and quite disgusting problem in a manhole that collects sewage, I went to the idea to make a capacitive lever sensor for liquids. Unlike sensor based on a float or based on ultrasound, capacitive sensors have no moving parts, so they are very reliable. Even conductive sensors have no moving parts, but they are sensitive to corrosion and uh, current leakages in case of other electric devices are in contact with the water, example a pump. These sensors are useful wherever the level of water or other liquids, such as cutting fluid, have to be monitored and controlled, such as in hydroponics, in watering systems, machine tools, and so on, between the two sensors plate that constitute a capacitor. In fact, the sensor is basically made of two plates that are connected to a conditioning circuit, which measures the capacitance well, you have to know that admittance sensors also exist. Indeed, admittance sensors are pretty similar to capacitive sensors. The only difference is in the circuits that instead of measuring the capacitance, sends a fixed frequency alternating signal detecting the variation of impedance, since the impedance of a capacitor is given by its capacitance at a given frequency. I've said this because you might be confused when you see my circuit where I exploit the variation of the frequency of an oscillator to infer the capacitance. So besides the mentioned method that I directly measure the capacitance through admittance, there are other three methods. One is to look at the time a capacitor takes to be charged from a given voltage to another, providing a source of constant charges or, in other words, a constant current source, and uh, the time required is taken to calculate the capacitance. A similar method is to look at the voltage the capacitor reaches on a fixed amount of time. And uh, the last method is to look at the frequency of an oscillator, which uh, oscillates by the mean of a resistor and a capacitor, where the capacitor is the unit under test. I prefer this last method because it is simpler to implement and offers the convenience to easy conditioning the signal into a variable voltage that, in turn, may be used to drive the input of an analog to digital converter of a microcontroller such as Arduino or an ESP8266. So let's dive into the construction of this water level sensor. I've used two stripes of aluminum to form the plates of a capacitor that will be located into a plastic pipe. Because the stripes don't have to enter in contact with the fluid, which may be conductive, such as in the case of water, I have covered the stripes with a layer of bicomponent polyester resin and on top of it a further layer of acrylic. I've not covered about 5 cm at one end of each stripe, because that will become the terminal contact to be connected to the circuit. The stripes have been placed into this PVC electrical conduit and kept in place using hot glue. To be sure to have the right gap between the two stripes, I've temporarily put this dense sponge in between. A better design would have been to use an aluminum pipe, also connected to ground, and an inner rod to form the outer plate of a coaxial capacitor. The external aluminum plate would work as a shield from induced electric fields, making the oscillation more stable. My first idea for the sensor was originally intended to gauge the level of sewage into a manhole, but eventually I changed my mind and reproposed this one to sense the level of the air conditioner water tank, because the gap between the plates is too narrow and I've thought that uh, because it's large, it would have not lasted long without clogging. I will show that sensor and its operation in the next episode. Alright, 
Now the sensor is ready and the next step is to check how it works. In this section of this breadboard I've put the circuit shown in this scheme. It is an oscillator followed by a pulse generator. The length of the pulses is designed to be shorter of the shortest cycle of the oscillator when the sensor is completely dry, namely when the capacitance is at its lowest value, hence the frequency is at its maximum. The sensor is represented by this capacitor in the schematic. Now let's test the circuit. When the sensor is dry, the frequency is 80.6 kHz. Calculating the capacitance based on the frequency, we have a total capacitance of 84.4 picofarad. Subtracting the 22 picofarad capacitor of the circuit, the result is a capacitance of 62.4 picofarad which is quite different from the calculated value of 29 picofarad. Why this difference? I think it depends by the parasitic capacitance of the circuit in the breadboard that I know is about 30 picofarad. So if we add further 30 picofarad, the likely parasitic capacitance, the final result is close to the theoretical value. Now let's see what happens when we plunge the sensor into the water and we see the frequency remarkably changes. When completely immersed, the frequency drops at 2.9 kHz and the resulting capacitance is around 2 nanofarad, which is really close to the theoretical value. This is the signal at the output of the pulse generator. After the pulse generator, the signal is forwarded to this stage, which converts the frequency into voltage and then to this stage, which detects when the voltage crosses the threshold set by the potentiometer, switching the LID and the buzzer to beep an alarm, and uh, perhaps uh, a relay to control something else. The analog signal after the frequency voltage converter can also be delivered to the analog input of an Arduino or an ESP8266 to monitor the tank level with a smartphone and uh, record the daily average and seasonal total amount of water produced. For the sake of reliability, instead of building the circuit on a prototype board, I've etched a piece of copper clad board drawing the traces by hand with printing ink. Why this method doesn't yield a professional looking board, to me is still less messy than using a prototype board. No through holes, the components are surface mounted. Mm, yeah, you know, advanced surface mounting technology. Voilà. The end terminal of the sensor is secured with this PVC cap holding place with epoxy. I've prepared this enclosure out of a chunk of plastic pipe and cap it with this PMMI disc that I've turned with a drill to perfectly fit the pipe. The circuit is then connected to the sensor and to the power supply that is provided by this 5V switching wall wart that I've salvaged from an old cell phone. Now it's time to test the final assembly. By the means of the potentiometer, the threshold can be adjusted at the desired level. The positive feedback resistor 27 kilo ohm helps to avoid oscillations when the water level is just at the threshold, providing a stable on-off switching. Next time I will make a special pressure capacitive sensor to detect the level of, well, disgusting stuff. So I invite you to stay tuned, subscribe and click the bell icon to receive the notification when I'll post a new video. Also don't forget to like and share. Oh, I had to connect the relay now to stop the air conditioner. For now that's all folks. Thanks for watching.